Hey! We're back with some of this. What is this game again? I forgot. Uh, Tales? <laughs> yes, it's Tales of uh, Symphonia. You're right. Uh, Tales of Symphonia. So, uh, Symphonia. I really like I, I like what I've played in the Tales games, uh, being Tales of Berseria and nothing else. I like uh, up to the point I got in Fantasia, and then that game decided to, like, turn its difficulty curve up to 10 and, like, completely screw me over. Okay, here's a question that I've been wondering, because I know it, it depends on people. It depends on what they want. Should difficulty curve be a ramp or a staircase? Uh, steady ramp. Yeah, I like a... I like a ramp that... I, I think I like a little bit of both. You know, I feel like I think Devil May Cry 3 does a really good job with the difficulty curve, where it's a ramp up until you hit, hit a verge, uh, hit a boss, and then you that becomes. Sounds weird, by the way. Do I? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh. It sounded like you had your like. It sounded like you were cupping your microphone while talking into it. Like you can had. You hear your... me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Well, well it's like not Devil that May... I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. But yeah, I feel like Devil May Cry 3 is um. A good example where you have like a ramp up until you hit a boss and that becomes your step yeah you know yep. and like the opposite of that the inverse would be like dark souls 3 where it's a staircase and then you hit your then you hit the boss and then it becomes the ramp yeah and then after that it's a staircase because the bosses are like a joke in the first half of dark souls 3 which is all i played of dark souls 3. Uh, i don't like dark souls 3. i don't mind it but <laughs> meh I'm, I more, think I'm they, more of a think... Bloodborne fan when it comes to that style of combat because Dark Souls 3 is more Bloodborne-ish than it is more Dark Souls 1. It's a, it's a middle ground between Dark Souls and Bloodborne. And certain things are way faster than they should be and other things are way slower than they should be, you know? Yeah. It's obvious that they want you to prioritize dex builds and go fast, yeah. which is why I'm going to be miserable because I like strength builds. I don't mind dex but, builds. Uh, I should try to I should try to expand my horizons, I guess, in that in that way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I do plan on eventually going through Dark Souls three. My favorite build though is anything strength related though for Dark Souls mm -hmm. one because it's just it's deadly. It's super well, I, I like, deadly. The reason why I really enjoy strength builds in Dark Souls where I'm not able to avoid like sometimes I'm just not able to avoid hits is because. Yeah. I like games that are high risk, high reward, and nothing says high risk, high reward than a big slow attack that will kill an enemy instantly. Yeah, yep. I'm gonna take a bunch of hits on the way there that are going to reduce my health, and I'm gonna to have to be smart about where I place those hits. However, that's the playstyle I enjoy for that reason. Yeah. Um, and having the game balanced around that is really cool. I and... ruined my playthrough of, uh, I think it was my first playthrough either on PC or, um, when I was playing it on the 360. But, um, I had this Y. Dark Souls 1? Yeah, Dark Souls 1. I had this Y hander and I was going like strength build, heavy overhead attack, crushing everything in my path. Yep, and I that's got the, the bright way I, I got the bright idea of, hey, maybe upgrading through the giant into a boss weapon will be better than what I have. It wasn't. It changed the movement, yeah. or the move set to yeah, be completely I'm... different from this Y, so. Like, I mean, I was, I was talking to our friend Kira last night about it, and uh, they were um, they were like making fun of me for using this white hander in the giant dad build, uh, and I giant simply explained. Build. Oh yeah, I, I simply explained. Well, there are weapons that do more damage, but there's no other weapons that does the squash that I like. Like the main reason you use this Y hander is because of that slam that just flattens the enemy. Yeah, and uh, and opens you up for follow up attacks and lets you, you even lets you retreat if you need to. You know. Yeah. It's very helpful. So uh, the last time, or no, after uh. I got a lot of- okay, how do I want to word this? After I fucked up the, uh, the audio issue thing, and, uh, went back and I ended up replaying the opening of this game, like, four times, mm -hmm. I got way too good at doing this fight and that race. 
<laughs> and then of course when uh, I record it for um doing it live or not live doing yep. it in post and actually mm -hmm. do try to do good I think I lost both I, lo I think I lose this fight and also that race <laughs> oh wow so like y you guys won't be able to see me actually do good at this and I was sad but it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. That's okay. I enjoy all the. I enjoy these one-on-one -on -one fights in the beginning of Kingdom Hearts One that are like completely optional and there for you if you want to get used to the combat. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. It's kind of. It kind of reminds me of the uh, being able to just freely move around the castle in Mario 64, where they basically create a space for you to appreciate and enjoy the new movement system. Because this must have been weird for a lot of people to have this kind of game in yeah. 3D with action gameplay. Yep, definitely. Because this is one of, if not the first game to have this style of combat, yes? Yeah, it really was to have, because uh... like there were action RPGs before this, but they were more about stun locking your enemy with combos and abilities and spells. Yeah. Like tail, most tails end games just turn into we'll spell, into spell, into spell, into spell, into spell with Star Ocean as well. Uh, same thing goes. Yeah. The, yeah. The tails games. Uh, the mana I meant, games. Uh, I should have specified. I meant seamlessly working it in. So like the combat just auto happens. Because in tails games, you go into your own. Uh, specifically with Fantasia. Or not Fantasia. <laughs> Fantasia. Yeah. Specifically with like Fantasia, you go into a uh, side-scrolling. On this island. Action combat style. There are any other worlds mm -hmm. out there. I guess Secret of Mana would work too. Yeah, the, yeah. the Second Densetsu series does that as well. But like, mainly it's just it's like like Second Densetsu was um, it's seamless as well. It doesn't go into a battle screen. The game is just the game, you know. So, yep. But it also has the uh, recharge else, mechanic right? that forces you to step out of combat for a second, kind of working exactly. like a cooldown, you know? Yeah. Yep. That's why uh, and you can cast spells in the meantime to while well, that fills uh, in some of the later games, think? I believe. But, but, but again, I'm going by all well, what I've seen on like YouTube videos and stuff. I barely played so any of the mana go. games. But Kingdom Hearts was the first game to really bring that kind of action combat into a role-playing game system, and I think it does it quite, quite beautifully, in my opinion. Yeah, it's really good. Now, there are some games that lean heavier on the action than the character building. Like, 2, for example, is more about using your spells wisely than it is about building your character. Yeah. Um, Because you can... You can do, like, I think, aren't Kingdom Key runs the easiest in Kingdom Hearts 2? fruit. Uh, two people share one, their destinies become intertwined. I, They'll remain a part of each maybe? other's lives. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Come well, I know in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, you your Keyblades <laughs> also don't make that much of a difference. Well, they don't press have a button. Ring. If this fucks up, I'm sorry. Okay, cool. cool, uh, cool. The volume was at 95%, so I had to change it to 100. Thank goodness we fixed that problem. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> When it came to when it comes to hey, check uh, out this still image. Oh my god! You see that? That that's just a image. That's not movement and or in three D. That was a, that was, a, that, was a, that was a big fat JPEG. I'm so yeah. happy. <laughs> it was. Oh, I love that. I'm still did angry. It, it, we it, don't it. actually get to go here in this game. That's okay. We get to go there in the second game. That's true, but this game I feel teases like... you. You see it right on the world there. map. Oh, you do, don't you? I'm pretty sure you do. At least I remember you doing. Oh, man. What's up? Like, nothing, I'm just happy to be playing Kingdom Hearts again. I just, I, I, I saw that JPEG thing and that just filled me with joy. I love little <laughs> things like that in games. Yeah. Like, that's like a 3D model. That's you, just right. Uh, you wouldn't have I, noticed that. If uh -huh. I hadn't pointed it out, that's the best part, because it blends so well. But if you look at I... the flags, they're not moving, so it's kind of mm -hmm. obvious by looking at that, but... I have, like, a, I have like a deep appreciation for uh, games that use... Or, like, games and films and animation that use, like, shortcuts to, like, give you the illusion of something. Yeah. Like, to trick your brain. Yeah. I, I love that kind of thing. I love the craft of it. I love like practical effects in movies and stuff, or, or smart uses of CG and cartoons and things like that. Heck yeah, yeah. 
I really appreciate that kind of thing. Uh, in games, it's fair to see, like, one of my favorite examples of this recently is in, uh, I think, Ace Combat 7, where there's a, a scene with a dog in it, and it's just a JPEG of a dog. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, like, yeah, it's like the dog is standing really, really still, and it's like, is that just an image of a dog? It sure is. It's just a PNG. Daisy? <laughs> I, uh, I want to know how much damage Donald did to Goofy with that thunder spell. Yeah, Donald, that's a bit over the top, man. That kills people. Yeah. Especially when also, you're wearing plate mail. That's metal. Something you never talk about with nobodies. And, uh, not, not like, low-level. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, like, the organization. I'm talking about low-level nobodies. Dust. Dusks, yes. Uh, or anything in between Dusks and uh, an organization member. Sora, it's implied that Sora just kills those things, right? Well, yeah. They just get destroyed. Yeah. But it's... You're not supposed to know this yet, but if you kill a Heartless and someone's nobody, they come back. Because when you okay. die, a nobody is created as well as a Heartless. And so if you kill both of those, that person will come back. I.e. Okay. Spoiler alert, organization members come back as human, and it's because you destroyed their nobody form. When yeah. you destroyed their heartless form is beyond me, and I guess it could have just been either one of the boss heartless through the game, or maybe some low-level heartless. You'll, we'll never they'll think, know. They'll think of a way to tie that in. Yeah. Me and Titus, but, uh... Exploring today. Yeah, that's you know, basically just... That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Stupid. So, what happens when just a normal person dies? Are they just dead? Heartless gets created. No, that's if they get consumed by darkness. Oh, if they get consumed by darkness, I think they're just gone until someone potentially makes that world reappear, then they might come back. Huh. Unless their world isn't destroyed and they just die. By getting consumed by darkness, I have no idea. Like, I, I, I thought the reason why uh, nobodies were created is if your heart gets eaten by a heartless. A heartless is created, and a nobody and a nobody is also created. Yes. Right. But if you just like, let's say I were to walk up to somebody in King, the world of King Mars and just shoot them with a gun, and they died, that'd just be a dead person, right? Yeah. There wouldn't be any. They wouldn't tie into the whole heartless thing. No, you have to get killed by a heartless. Or at least, your heart has to get taken and or consumed by a Heartless. Yes. So if you shot that person and their heart was released and consumed by a Heartless, then maybe. But I don't know. Yeah, so when you kill somebody, a heart doesn't die. It goes, it's like a soul. Well, it, it is a soul. They call it a soul in the manga. It's a soul. Uh, so when you, when you kill that, when you kill that person, their heart is released, I would assume. Their soul goes somewhere. Uh, would is it implied? Like, okay, okay. My question is: Is there an afterlife, or does the heart just go up into space and the world of, in basically the realms of darkness that exist between worlds? And from there, is it consumed by heartless to create by the heartless to create a nobody and a heartless? Well, no. You your heart, the soul, wouldn't create the nobody. Because you need a shell. Yeah, it would just create a heartless. It would just create a heartless. It would just create a heartless because the body that gets left behind is the empty shell that gets turned into a nobody. Or would it? Form unless, a or, unless. Or, or, no, wait, 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 wait. No, that doesn't make any sense. Because if the if you if you kill somebody, their heart gets released, their soul yes. gets released, and that would just create the singular. Because all all Kingdom Hearts is is it's a singularity created by all these hearts and souls being attracted to one another. Yeah, I would assume that's because human beings and mortals in general have a natural aptitude for one another and want to be they want to be together. They don't that's want to be lonely. Same, yeah, more or less. Yeah. So that means that even if you were to kill somebody, it would eventually form together to create Kingdom Hearts. I've come to see the yeah, which as is long just as that heart gets released. Huh? But I don't know this if you kill connected. someone with a gun, their heart would get released. What are you talking about? I think it either has to be a heartless or the keyblade that appears at the end of this game that to be gets used clips. for a scene that I'm not gonna spoil. Yeah, because I would because because Axel Axel's an assassin, and I'm assuming he's not he doesn't just kill other nobodies. Where did you I would assume 
he lights up other people too. Like all the Final Fantasy characters that aren't around anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know. But My yeah, is once, a, them all. There is so once a Heartless gets done them. with your um, heart, that empty it's shell that so gets good. left either turns into a nobody, unless for yeah. whatever reason well, you see. had a strong will, then you'll there. turn into a, a being thing. that's like the organization. One who knows yeah. Nothing also, this stand. is Billy Zane speaking right now, and I fucking love his voice in this role. It's too I bad agree. he didn't do anything else voice acting wise that I know of. Yeah, that was our first recording session, just me looking up all the different voice actors and stuff that they did. Yep. No, Titus and Walker are not voiced by the same voice actors. Actor? Actors. Yes, they're not voiced. Act yeah. I thought you said actors for a moment. No. They're not voiced by the same voice actors as they were voiced by in Final Fantasy X. That's what I was nope, trying not to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. But yeah, um... Hold that mechanics thought. Of... I think we're getting to the end of the episode here in a second. Yep, All we right, are. Alright, next episode you get to find the secret of death. Yep, thank you for watching.